Jack served as the overnight watchman at a mid-sized hotel in his hometown. His primary role was to maintain the reception desk, greeting guests who needed to check in or out during the wee hours. However, much of the time, he'd find himself in a near-empty lobby, with few guests coming or going. His nightly routine usually included a lot of waiting, a still sentinel observing the hotel's entryway. Most of the time, his encounters with guests were benign, although he did occasionally deal with disgruntled patrons airing their grievances. However, one night set itself apart from the usual monotony in a rather eerie manner. On this night, Jack was in his usual position at the reception when a storm decided to provide an unsettling backdrop. Generally, unfavorable weather deterred any major foot traffic, and this stormy night was no different. To counteract the boredom, Jack turned to his phone. Suddenly, a man appeared at the hotel's main entrance, disrupting the tranquility. The stranger passed through the first set of doors, stopping between the two entrances to survey the interior through the glass. His gaze landed on Jack briefly before he patted his pockets in a flustered manner and walked back into the storm. Jack, who had long since become accustomed to peculiar behaviors from years of working at the hotel, shrugged it off, assuming the man had merely forgotten something in his car. One odd detail about the man struck Jack, he had no suitcase or bags. Yet, this was not entirely strange, as guests often checked in and out during the day, and he assumed the man had a room already. The phone at the reception desk jolted Jack out of his musings a few minutes later. The caller, dialing from an external number, explained that he'd parked his car in the front lot and needed help with his luggage. When Jack reassured him he could bring his luggage in himself, the man insisted Jack come outside and help him, promising the suitcase was light. Jack acquiesced but asked the man to pull his car up to the entrance for convenience. There was a pause, an agreement, and then a click as the call ended. A hint of annoyance creeping in, Jack left his post at the desk, positioning himself between the entrance doors, waiting. But the man didn't arrive as quickly as expected. After a while, Jack peeked outside, spotting the stranger across the parking lot, beckoning him. The sight stirred a sense of unease within Jack, it didn't make sense for anyone to trek across the lot with their luggage in such terrible weather. With a shake of his head, Jack retreated to his desk, hoping the man would drive his car to the entrance if he truly needed assistance. Not long after, the man burst through the hotel doors, visibly out of breath. He repeated his request, practically pleading for Jack's help with his suitcase. Jack, however, stuck to his initial condition of the car being brought up front. The man countered, arguing that he'd already taken his luggage out and didn't want to repack. Now feeling a strong sense of alarm, Jack asked the man if he was a guest, reminding him that he would need to check in before receiving any further assistance. The man's reaction was a sharp departure from his earlier polite demeanor, he seemed personally affronted and demanded Jack's assistance immediately, citing the rain-soaked state of his belongings. Jack had reached his limit and responded with a firm assertion, he would not assist if the man refused to check in and left his luggage to get soaked in the rain. The stranger, now furious, stormed out, showing his middle finger as a parting gesture. The man never returned that night. When the day shift staff arrived, Jack relayed the unsettling encounter. As far as he knew, the man never came back to the hotel. Jack couldn't help but feel rattled by the strange experience, aware that the stranger hadn't been a guest after all. Instead, he had been an unknown man attempting to bait him into a precarious situation during a turbulent night. Our protagonist, a character named John, is not one for road trips. His preference has always leaned towards air travel when covering long distances. But when an unexpected family funeral called him to travel approximately 10 hours by road to his cousin's residence, he didn't have much of a choice. 
Unsure of the length of his stay, he packed a week's worth of necessities and set off on his journey at about 10 a.m. the next day. It had been roughly five or six years since he undertook such a lengthy drive, but he remained confident in his ability to reach his destination in a day without needing to halt at a hotel. A couple of hours into his trip, he noticed the ominous formation of a storm cloud ahead. In no time, he was caught in the middle of a fierce downpour accompanied by thunder. The route he was traversing was a long stretch passing through plain fields and occasionally, small forests parts of the road formed a valley where rainwater collected, devoid of a proper drainage system. John was forced to reduce his speed significantly to navigate these areas safely and avoid hydroplaning or getting stuck in the flooded patches of road. At one point, the path ahead was completely inundated, forcing him to turn back and find an alternate route. The unexpected detour elongated the duration of his journey. After nearly eight hours behind the wheel, he was still about five hours away from his destination. The day was drawing to a close, and he was physically exhausted from the strain of driving in the inclement weather. He knew he needed to find a place to rest before resuming his journey. After a 45-minute struggle to stay alert, he chanced upon a tiny town. By tiny, he means the town could boast of no more than 20 buildings and a few isolated farmhouses spread over miles. His search for a motel proved futile, and he had to settle for the parking lot of a local grocery store, where he parked his car in a secluded corner. The town was eerily silent, save for a handful of streetlights and no cars on the roads. The setting was somewhat unsettling, so John ensured his car was locked and took a few moments to survey his surroundings before reclining his seat and closing his eyes. Given the late hour and the persistent rain, he was not overly concerned about any untoward incidents. To him, it seemed safer than parking on the side of a deserted road without any assistance nearby. Within ten minutes, the rhythm of the rain lulled him to sleep. When he woke, he realized the storm had intensified. His surroundings were shrouded in darkness. Squinting in the distance, he noticed a figure moving towards his car. Initially, he expected them to veer off or disappear, but as they came closer, it became evident they were headed straight towards him. Despite the rain's interference, he could distinguish the figure as a man once he was about twenty feet away. The man's nonchalance in the face of the pouring rain was unnerving. But since the man seemed unarmed, John felt relatively secure inside his locked car. When the stranger was within a few feet, he veered towards the rear door of the car. Instead of attempting to open or break in, he placed his hands flat on the door, seemingly trying to push the vehicle. Confused and alarmed by the man's odd behavior, John concluded he was dealing with an unstable individual. Reacting quickly, he turned the ignition and switched on his headlights, hoping to dissuade the man. However, his efforts were in vain. The stranger persisted, continuing his attempt to push the car. John had had enough and slowly began to reverse out of his parking spot. The man trailed behind for a bit, maintaining his contact with the vehicle before finally letting go. As John pulled away and began to exit the parking lot, he noticed the man standing still, watching him. The stranger then started walking back in the direction he had initially come from. John decided not to take any more breaks. He drove the rest of the way to his cousin's house without stopping. The eerie encounter in the small town parking lot was enough to keep him alert and on edge for the remainder of the journey. Ethan was a young teenager, living with his parents in a small, secluded house nestled in the vast forest landscape of Washington State. Their home was situated about 20 minutes away from the nearest town, and the closest neighbors were situated half a mile away in each direction. This level of seclusion was commonplace in their region, characterized by wide, unending greenery, punctuated by sparse towns and a few large cities. Ethan, having grown up in the house, 
was accustomed to the isolation it brought. But an incident that occurred when he was 14 years old shattered his sense of safety and comfort in their remote dwelling. It was during his spring break, and Ethan's parents had planned a trip to Florida. They were all supposed to depart for the airport on Sunday morning. However, a hiccup at his father's work led to the last-minute cancellation of the trip. To compensate, Ethan's parents decided to spend Sunday at a local water park. Despite the enjoyable day, Ethan couldn't help but feel disappointed about the cancelled vacation. They spent four or five hours at the water park before a threatening storm cloud began approaching. The sudden appearance of the storm sent everyone at the park scrambling to pack up and leave. By the time Ethan and his parents returned home, they found themselves amidst an intense storm, complete with heavy rain, thunder, and lightning. Pulling into their driveway, they immediately noticed that the garage was wide open. His father brushed it off, assuming he'd just forgotten to close it. However, Ethan's mother claimed that she distinctly remembered seeing it fully closed when they left. Yet, nothing else seemed out of place, so they shrugged off the open garage and went inside. Upon their return, Ethan's parents settled on the couch to watch TV, while he made his way upstairs to his room. As he climbed the staircase, the rain pounding against the roof, he thought he heard a faint sound, like something moving in the hallway. He quickened his steps, expecting to find a stray animal, but the hallway was empty. However, he was startled to find his bedroom lights switched on. He couldn't recall turning them on that day, and he was certain he hadn't left them on. With a growing sense of unease, Ethan stood outside his room, listening intently for any signs of danger before entering. After a few moments of silence, he heard a faint shuffling sound, like a small rodent moving amongst boxes. Ethan tentatively opened the door, half expecting to see a rat scurrying around, but nothing appeared amiss at first glance. His room looked undisturbed, which was at odds with the strange signs he'd noticed. However, as he sat on his bed, trying to make sense of the peculiar events, a shadow darted across the bottom of his bedroom door. He realized in horror that it was a person's shadow. Trapped in his room, he quickly texted his dad, alerting him of the intruder upstairs. He heard his dad rushing up the stairs almost instantly after reading the message. Ethan nervously stood by his door, listening to his father's approaching footsteps. After a tense few seconds, his father opened the door, a look of concern on his face. Ethan quickly explained the situation, and they both made their way downstairs. Just as they reached the bottom of the steps, a loud thud echoed from upstairs, followed by the sound of hurried footsteps racing down the hallway. They dashed into the living room, Ethan's father brandishing a small bat, as the front door swung open and a figure sprinted out into the storm. It took nearly 30 minutes for the police to arrive due to their remote location. They questioned Ethan and his parents, and surveyed the house before departing. Despite their efforts, the intruder was never apprehended. It became apparent to the family that the break-in wasn't a random act. The intruder likely knew about their planned vacation, implying a chilling possibility that the culprit was someone they knew and interacted with. This realization shook Ethan to his core, making him question the trust he placed in the people around him. It served as a disturbing reminder that, sometimes, one's biggest threats could be hiding in plain sight.